Hi everyone, this is Ramaling Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is Quality Risk Management Tools as per ICH Q9. Let us see the basic purpose of the risk assessment tools. This guideline provides principles and examples of tools for quality risk management that can be applied to different aspects of pharmaceutical quality. These aspects include development, manufacturing, distribution, etc. This is described in section 2, the scope of the guideline. Let us see how these risk assessment tools work. Basic principles and examples for quality risk management are provided in this guideline. These tools can be effectively applied for initial development of the product, routine manufacturing and distribution of the product to the customer. A life cycle approach is recommended. Meaning of life cycle approach is to, to be understood as, the, as long as the product is manufactured commercially. Let us see the basic three principles of risk management. The guideline says what might go wrong, what is the likelihood, the probability it will go wrong, what are the consequences, the severity, what might go wrong during execution, and how frequently can that happen, how many times it can happen. What are the serious consequences of the outcome? So these questions will be asked for the entire risk assessment process. This is very important to note. Let us see how the quality risk management tools work. Routine tools are among eight tools, FMEA, FMECA, FTA, and risk ranking and filtering are more practical for routine use. Also, supporting statistical tools, this is the ninth tool, which is the most important tool for supporting all the eight tools. So if you see carefully, out of total nine tools, FMEA, FME, CA, FTA, risk ranking and filtering are very useful for routine risk management assessment. Statistical tools, is also a part of quality risk management tools. However, this is useful to evaluate the, the numerical data that is generated during application of the above routine tool. Statistical tools include things like control charts with uh, warning limits, histograms, Pareto charts, process cap capability analysis, etc., to name a few. Let us understand FMEA. FMEA is Failure Mode Effects Analysis. The guideline says FMEA provides for an evaluation of potential failure modes for processes and, are, and their likely effects on outcomes and our product performance. It is a powerful tool for summarizing the important modes of failure, factors causing these failures, and the likely effects of these failures. Let us see how to understand this. So, FMEA is a failure mode effects analysis. What kind of failure mode can result in a, a failure on the, on the outcome? By definition itself, this tool evaluates the failure mode and the likely outcome of the failure. It effectively summarizes all potential failure modes which cause failure or non-conformities and the subsequent adverse effects. This is referred as 1.2 in the, in the guideline in the Annex 1 of Risk Management Methods and Tools. Let us understand the potential uses of this tool. 
The guideline says FMEA can be applied to equipment and facilities and might be used to analyze a manufacturing operation and its effect on product or process. It identifies the elements operation within the system that render it vulnerable. The output results of the FMEA can be used as a basis for design or further analysis or to guide resource deployment. Let us understand this is particularly very useful while initiating a change control for equipment or facility. This identifies the elements that can cause failures. The great advantage of this tool is it helps for making a design to, uh, of, the, of the facility or the equipment. Make sure that this particular provision is there in your SOP of change control. If not, modify to include this important aspect. The assessment could be classified as low, medium or high after evaluation of the data. This is mostly uh, called a qualitative assessment. So you don't have to give any numbering for this. So this is the advantage. You can have a low risk, a medium risk or a high risk based on the assessment. Let us look into FMECA. FMEA might be extended to incorporate an investigation of the degree of severity of the consequences and their respective probabilities of occurrence and their detectability, thereby becoming a failure mode effects and criticality analysis. See, the difference between FMEA and FMECA is the criticality analysis. So the C is the one which is important here. It is in fact similar to FMEA, but the degree of severity, the probability and the detectability is rated over a scale of say one to five or one to 10. The more the number, the more the risk. In this case, the criticality is classified based on the multiplication output, the product output of yes, the severity, P, the probability, and D, the detectability. So the difference between FMEA and FMECA is in FMEA, you decide on low, high, and medium risks, whereas in this, you have a rating for uh, each category of the risk. This is the difference. Otherwise, everything else is same for both. Let us try to understand another important tool FTA, the fault tree analysis. The FTA tool is an approach that assumes failure of the functionality of a product or process. This tool evaluates a system or subsystem failures one at a time, but can combine multiple causes of failure, identifying the causal chains. Let us see how this works. This in fact is an opposite of FMEA. In FMEA, the failure mode analysis will help to address the potential failure. In FTA, the cause of failure is attributed to a failure mode. It is something like a post-mortem analysis. So the, the failure is addressed, how and what, what, what are the possible potential reasons for failure. This is the difference between FMEA and FTA. Let us see the great potentiality of the FTA tool. FTA can be used to investigate a complaint or a deviation in order to fully understand their root cause and to ensure that the intended improvements will fully resolve the issue. This, is, this will help to investigate complaints or deviations to get into the exact root cause of failure. So it is important, please check your SOPs on market complaints and deviation, whether or not this aspect is included in that, to use FTA tool to investigate a complaint or a deviation. So if it is not there, 
please try to incorporate and use this tool the FTA tool will be very very useful for investigating the deviations and complaints let us try to understand another important tool risk ranking and filtering risk ranking and filtering is a tool for comparing and ranking risks risk ranking of complex systems typically requires evaluation of multiple diverse quantitative and qualitative factors for each risk the tool involves breaking down a basic risk question into as many components as needed to capture factors involved in the risk also these factors are combined into a single relative risk score that can then be used for ranking risks filters in the form of weighting factors or cutoff for risk scores can be used to scale or fit the risk ranking to management or policy objectives this is a very important tool for comparing and ranking risks ranking is done based on the performance of the product how the performance is done the performance is evaluated by multiple factors of different qualitative and quantitative methods then there are filters used after giving necessary weightage for each quantitative and qualitative uh, risk assessment values let us see the potential uses of this particular tool risk ranking and filtering can be used to prioritize manufacturing sites for inspection or audit by regulators or industry this is very useful tool for prioritizing the inspections of your manufacturing sites of your uh, vendors for example you have a vendor who supplies the material which is consistent and there are no failures there are no time delays the product delivered safely taking considering all these things and you give weightage for that and the vendor may be rated with a high ranking like you know you can give things like a five star rating for him and the inspection of this kind of facilities can be once in five years or even more so depending upon the ranking if the ranking is low if it is four star or three star or two star you decide your uh, in, uh, the inspection of your vendors vendor facilities based on this risk ranking and filtering methodology this is very useful so if a if a vendor has a risk uh, has a star rating of 1 that means every year you may have to go and then inspect that particular vendor and if the risk ranking is 5 if there is if the five star rating is given for any vendor that means you don't have to worry about that vendor for Uh, long and he can be uh, inspected once in five years. See the advantage. So your SOP you can modify in such a way to see that you know this kind of rating is given so that your load is less on your inspections of your vendors also. The same thing the regulators also use. They prioritize based on the lot of data generated and uh, checked by them. This particular point you have to note. i hope you understand well the intent of the few uh, tools that are described in this guideline and uh, i hope you, the subject is useful for you let us see the importance of integrating integrating the quality risk management into qms this is described in annex 2 of the guideline annex 2.1 says the quality risk management should be as a part of integrated quality management the point number 2 says part of regulatory operations point number 3 says part of development point number 4 says a part of facilities equipment and utilities see most of your quality management systems have to be addressed taking into consideration the quality risk management uh, principles and examples given in this guide i hope you understand the requirements well so 
try to modify your systems to see that the you get a better advantage and better understanding of this guideline thank you thanks for watching for more videos please do subscribe like and share